What's up YouTube, it's Holiday Anthony, and today I am giving you guys a one year review of my Honda Grand. I've owned the Grom for just a little over a year now, and I wanted to make a review that will kind of, you know, give you guys an idea on what it's like to own the Grom for a year, um, whether or not it's worth the money, whether or not it makes a good first bike, um, and, and just kind of things like that. I want to be as informative as possible for you guys because um, as far as reviews out there go, um, there's some good ones, but I kind of wish that I would have found a review uh, that was a little bit more informative. I mean, at the time I bought the Grom, the only review I saw on YouTube was with some dude in his garage at like two o'clock in the morning and uh, not to bash on that guy but I but I'm just saying I kind of wanted a more informative um, thorough review especially something that was long term so that's what I'm gonna give you guys today I guess for right now I will give you guys kind of like an introduction to why I got the Grom um, and kind of my introduction to it and I'll try to make this short and sweet but uh, I've been following the Grom since it was first released um, in the US back in 2013 or something like that um, and when I first saw it, I loved it. I thought it looked really, really cool. I think uh, Honda did a really good job with the marketing, kind of making it like this hooligan bike um, that you could do wheelies on and stoppies on, and, and that's exactly what it is. And so um, I loved everything about it, except for the price tag. Uh, right when I saw the price, I just, I could, I, it, was, it was really hard for me to, to, to swallow that. I was just, I, I couldn't believe that, you know, a bike could cost, you know, that bike could cost anywhere from 3000 to, um, you know, $4,000, $4,500, you know, depending on where you live. Now, with that said, um, I did want to test ride one. Um, I saw so many people on YouTube just having a blast on them, and um, I thought maybe, you know, maybe if I test ride one, um, it'll be worth it. And uh, specifically, Fool again. So shout out to Fool again, man. I mean, he made the Grom look like the most fun I I I've ever I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I mean, he started vlogging in the winter time in the snow, and he just, yeah, he really encompasses on like what the Grom is. Um, but anyway, so I did go and test ride one a uh, little over a year ago. So, I mean, almost two years ago, I went to uh, my local dealership and jumped on one. And um, I thought, I guess my first impressions of the bike were, I, I really couldn't get over the price. That was like, the, that was the one thing on my mind. Um, and then the other thing is that it, it felt cheap. And um, I know that's, you know, it's what you guys expect. It's, it's cheap in comparison to other bikes, but I mean, it felt even cheap for, for 3,500 bucks, which was which, which what my dealership was asking. It just didn't feel worth $3,500 to me. I'll, I'll just say that. Um, however, I did tell myself and I told everybody I knew that I did have a blast on it. I did think it was like a stupid fun time um, that it was worth about $2,000. If I could find something in the $2,000 range that I would buy it. And I was going to leave it at that and kind of move on, but I just kept looking. Um, at that point, I was kind of set on the fact that I, I did want a Grom. I, I kept looking on Craigslist and I eventually found one and I found this guy right here, um, which is funny. I actually bought it from a subscriber. Um, long story short, I bought it from a subscriber. He was super cool. So I'm going to give you guys kind of a complete rundown on the Grom. This is the same spot that I've reviewed my SV650. I did um, an Evo video here. I've done a couple of videos here, mainly for the fact that I like the lighting and it's nice and wide open and, and quiet. So uh, let's go ahead and jump to this. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and talk looks. Um, how does the Grom look? Uh, so this is the 2015 model. Um, it's had two different models. It's had this one and then the SF model. So um, the SF model has the uh, LED front headlight here and it kind of has a little bit of a wider look with a uh, more rigid seat. Um, this is the original Grom um, as far as, as looks go. Uh, the 2013 and 14 model, uh, they did have different fairings. All the fairings themselves around down here were all painted the same color. 2015 and 2016, um, it was kind of this dual color, um, I guess this dual panel style to where it had the, uh, the flat black here with the painted color. Um, so as far as looks go, I mean, <laughs> I think this bike, I think with some mods and with some money into it, I think it can look, it can look like, a, like a cool little badass bike, but I mean, to be honest, it's a, it's a dorky looking bike. It, it, it is, and it's even more dorky when you have a dude that's 6'1 riding it. Uh, there's really no way around that. However, 
uh, through modding and through kind of just some fine touches you can kind of get it to where it'll look pretty cool okay so jumping into mods really quick um, there is a ton of stuff you guys can do to these bikes. I mean, there is a, a ton. I, I, I actually really, I, I don't even really want to make this part of the video just because there is so much you can do. Pretty much every single part on the Grom can be replaced. I mean, you can get a big bore kit on them and, and, and jump up the CCs. Um, you can change the wheels. You can change the exhaust, the suspension, the fairings, the handlebars, the headlights, the, the seat. I mean, realistically, you can change everything on this bike. Um, there isn't one piece that they haven't made uh, in the aftermarket world. So. Um, just to give you guys a quick rundown, I threw some Pro Taper Honda Mini Bars um, on the bike that I think look really, really good. Uh, they do widen the grip a little bit. And if I do, if I, were, I guess if I were to drop the bike, um, it would hit the bars before it hit any of the plastic. So kind of a safety feature and um, they also just feel better, um, feel a little bit sturdier, I guess you could say. So um, I do really like the bars. I did throw on some Amazon bar and mirrors here. Uh, these are, these are relatively cheap. I think they're like 13 bucks um, and they, and they do the job. They look really, really good. Um, I am running the zoom loop exhaust. Um, now I do have a video that I made specifically on this exhaust here um, I think it sounds awesome I will I will show you guys here in a little bit um, it looks really good though I really like the loop it kind of gives a little bit more of a dynamic here um, at the bottom of the bike um, now as far as looks elsewhere um, I did change uh, the boomerangs to all red here nothing uh, I guess red on both sides kind of split up the color I thought it looked a little bit better um, and then of course uh, I guess the, the elephant in the room uh, most people notice that I put an Olin's uh, rear shock on here and um, this is something that not only visually looks good but functionally um, it works really really well and uh, I really like it for especially being a, a heavier rider you know I'm a little over 200 pounds so I needed uh, an Owens rear shock because the uh, the stock rear shock was just way too soft and so I was bottoming out um, on the back end so um, I got that as well um, so but that's pretty much it oh I guess I sorry one more thing uh, and the tail tidy here so I did pick up a tail tidy with um, aftermarket turn signals on the rear and in the front here and I guess while we're talking about that I'll show you really quick um, they aren't super exciting and they're not super bright but um, LED flush mounts right here and then I have LED um, small turn signals right here in the back and and they're really they're not super bright but they're just bright enough I think this is a moto dynamic um, uh, uh, license plate eliminator or fender eliminator it's got a nice little LED light down here um, with your LED turn signals that I picked up off of eBay or somewhere like that and of course the best mod all day Anthony sticker get yours today now let's talk about cost um, I guess while we're talking about looks um, so the cost of the bike that's going to vary where you live uh, I would say the average here in Idaho most people are paying around $3,500 uh, I've talked to some other people out of the states um, or I guess within the states in different areas um, and they're paying um, upwards of four grand some people are paying over four grand it kind of depends on your financing now um, if you have good credit you can probably finance something for for pretty low um, I recommend if you can pay a good chunk of cash for one um, that's probably the best way to do it or put a large down payment on uh, I know a lot of guys here locally that have just completely financed a Grom and I'm telling you right now that I think that's a very bad decision I don't think the Grom is worth $3,500 um, or even any more than that so if you were to finance it you're not only going to lose money immediately but you're going to um, be owing more in the long run than you should necessarily owe so um, if you're thinking about financing, I would highly suggest shooting for a really low interest rate through a credit union. Um, if you don't have any credit at all, then save up a good chunk of cash to put down as a down payment. I mean, at least a thousand bucks. So cost wise, they just, yeah, it's just hard to justify. I know a lot of people think that they're going to be saving that much money in gas, um, but that's just not really possible with this bike. I mean, I think $3,500 still outweighs um, gas unless you're driving a huge you know, monster truck. So uh, cost-wise, that's kind of what you're looking at to buy it. Um, I would say for ownership uh, per year, the cost, I mean, I think I spent... It takes a quart of oil. I changed the oil three times last year. Uh, a quart of oil is about five bucks, about 15 bucks in oil. Um, 
I, I mean, I spent a lot of money on mods, so I can't really count that. Uh, if you do count that in there, at least expect a couple hundred bucks a year to spend on mods. Um, but cost would be oil, uh, gas. Gas is cheap. Um, other than that, that's it. I mean, I can't think of really any other cost um, for the bike maintenance-wise. Getting into insurance and um, registration, that's of course, that's going to change per state depending on where you live. Um, Insurance-wise, uh, I'm paying, I'm 20, 27, so I am paying uh, on this bike uh, 75 bucks a year. Um, to some people that may seem like a lot, to some people that may seem like absolutely nothing. Um, 75 didn't seem like a whole lot to me uh, for the entire year. I, I, I don't know what that comes out to being per month. I'm bad at math. Uh, 12, 12 times seven is 84, so I'm paying around six bucks a month for it. Um, and that's just with liability only. I don't have full coverage on this. So um, it's relatively cheap insurance. That'll kind of change uh, for you. Like I said, I'm 27. I do have uh, multiple speeding tickets on my record. Not from this, but um, I do have some tickets. So uh, that's kind of what you'd be looking at for overall cost of the bike and whether or not I think it's worth uh, buying it for, um, for the asking price at the dealership. Okay, so let's go into reliability. Um, now, this engine... I I mean, okay, I, I, I'll just say this right now. I am not going to go into this a lot because all you have to do is type in a Fooligan video, um, specifically watch the, the video where it's, I think it's Grom's at the quarry or something like that, or really any one of his videos. Watch how much he beats the crap out of this bike and tell me that this engine is not reliable. Uh, I, I, it's literally all I'm going to say. Um, yeah, it, it, I, I kind of tell people it's a modern, it's a modern day Honda Trail 70 or, or something like that. Um, I literally am never worried about this bike. Um, watch a Fooligan video, watch other videos. Um, this is this, this hands down is probably going to be the most reliable bike you will ever own. Okay, so now that I've kind of talked about a majority of the off-bike things, I'll give you guys kind of like a quick tutorial on the Grom. Just, I mean, kind of where the buttons are, what things look like, um, before we jump to the other topics um, uh, when I need to ride the bike. So, um, jumping around to, I guess, the cockpit of the Grom here, um, really, really quick. We have our um, gas tank right here. Gas goes inside here. Uh, key pops in. The whole, the whole. Uh, cap just comes out and you fill the gas there. Um, going here we have the handlebars, pro taper bars, we have um, throttle right here, we have uh, clutch, we have brake, you have your brake fluid reservoir, uh, horn, turn signals, high beams, low beams. Um, here on the cluster itself you do have, oh, blinker still on. You do have a fuel gauge. I think this is awesome for a Grom. I think a Grom definitely needed um, a fuel gauge. That was something that um, my Triumph doesn't even have that. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, RPM gauge. There is a trip um, for trip A, trip B, your total mileage, um, your mile and hours, uh, or your miles per hour right here in the front. You can change that to uh, kilometers, uh, kilometers per hour. And then you have your clock. So um, it's really simple. You have your high beam light when you turn that on your turn signal will show right here and um, there's a check engine light for anything that uh, could go wrong uh, at that point I would just turn you know pull the bike over and turn it off um, you have your turn signals up front with your headlight um, so <laughs> I'm trying to just kind of help people like the kids that kind of want to want to know things if, if, if you're still watching this so um, over on here you have your engine casing on this side uh, you have your shifter lever so on the Grom it's a four speed so it's one down down, uh, three up, so one down, half a notch to neutral, then three up for second, third, and fourth gear. Um, here's where your feet go. Your passenger pegs are back here. Um, you kick both of these down, and that's where your passenger would sit on the back. Um, do I think the Grom can ride with two people? Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, I weigh 200 pounds. My girlfriend weighs a little over 100 pounds, and we can ride on this together comfortably. Um, the biggest thing is just changing out that rear shock so it can support you too. Uh, Power-wise, I haven't had any issues um, riding two up. Um, going back here, you have the swing arm with the wheels. Now, um, one fun fact about the Grom is that these wheels are actually end key wheels. Uh, most people don't know that. If you kind of brush apart some of this uh, dust here, uh, you can see the little NK logo. Um, so both the front and the rear NK, which I think is pretty cool. Now this is the swing arm back here. 
you have your rear uh, Nissan brake, and then you have your front Nissan uh, Nissan uh, uh, front brake here. So this is just a single um, single disc or single rotor front brake. Um, it does plenty work for the Grom. I mean, you don't need much more braking power than what this provides or what the rear provides. Um, you can easily lock this up. You can easily lock the rear up, and um, the Grom has plenty of stopping power. Now going right here, um, the Grom is air cooled, so. Um, it needs to have kind of these, uh, I guess these little fins here to kind of keep the engine um, cold. Um, there's no extra fluid in here other than oil. So um, that's where um, it's gonna stay cool. Um, right here is of course the exhaust connecting to the, the single header. Uh, and then back here you have um, your rear brake um, and then you have your, um, I guess some of your electronics to trigger your light so um, that's kind of like a rundown like a quick rundown of just kind of uh, of the Grom in itself it's a it's a really simple bike I think it's a really uh, good bike to kind of learn things on it's super simple all right so now it's time for the fun part of the video we're gonna start this off with a sound clip so you guys can hear what the exhaust sounds like so this is the zoom loop exhaust um, I got it from Tommy Davis on YouTube. Uh, watch my video on this if you're if you're curious about this exhaust um, in general. But I think it does a good job at making the Grom sound, uh, I guess, beefier than uh, than than how it should. But uh, I'll see if I can pick some of this up for you. sounds really meaty in the upper RPMs. Um, I think this exhaust is awesome. It does make the bike feel quicker. Um, it sounds great and I think it really looks good. So um, let's go ahead and jump on the bike and start talking about the riding experience, the power, and we're going to talk about whether or not I think it's a good first bike or not. So uh, let's jump to it. All right, so getting on the Grom, kick stand up. All right, so the riding experience. I don't even know where to start. It's a Grom, man. You're meant to do hooligan shit, and I don't really do enough hooligan stuff with it. Like, I don't ride on enough sidewalks. I mean, I am now, but I don't do this near as much as I should. But it makes great for going on sidewalks, jumping off of curbs, things like that. I mean, it really is an awesome, an awesome, awesome little bike. So let's jump into it. This bike for me um, was like a dick around bike. So um, it was not my primary motorcycle. Now I do think it's great for getting to and from work. Um, that's primarily how I use it. The bike gets 120 miles to the gallon. Um, as, far as, um, as far as gas goes, it really doesn't get any better than that. Um, it's really flickable. This bike, I don't know the exact weight, but it is stupid light. I have taken it up in the twisties and it has performed extremely well um, up at our local um, Bocas Basin is where I kind of do some downhill bombing. Now the stock tires on this bike, they suck. They suck really, really bad. They are very cheap. They're made out of recycled trash can lids. Um, I do not recommend those. I mean, I'm on them right now um, and I've ridden a bike that had uh, the Michelin Pilot Powers and those felt way stickier. They felt way firmer. Um, they didn't feel as cheap as these. I mean, these tires will pretty much last until the end of time. These things are gonna to outlive cockroaches and Twinkies and things like that. So it's extremely flickable. It's really easy to move or th maneuver through traffic. I could really see this bike doing extremely well in a highly populated city um, like San Francisco or Seattle or something like that. I think these things um, would just be awesome at ripping through, um, ripping through traffic because they have just enough power to do that um, but not enough power to, to really get you in trouble. So in terms of like uh, if you were to take it to like a track or something like that, you definitely need some sticky tires, but um, a, a popular motor vlogger, um, Faith Riding Johnny, he does a lot of track days with his Grom and it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, so it looks like he's kind of getting a different use other than commuting and other, other than doing wheelies and things like that. But uh, primarily this bike, it makes a great stunt bike. I mean, you can watch Fooligan's videos. I mean, he does a lot of wheelies, he does a lot of stoppies, he does a lot of um, really cool shit that I can't do and I probably will never be able to do. I can pop up the front wheel, what feels like this high, but is more like that high. Um, I've been working on my wheelies and I've been making up excuses. Um, I guess really ultimately, I'm just really afraid to dump the bike. I would just hate myself if I if I wreck the bike. I'm, I'm sure it'd be really, really cheap to replace. I know fairings are, are a dime a dozen. 
in on eBay and things like that. I just, I just, I personally just don't want to dump it, but that, that's just me. So that's kind of what you're looking at as far as um, writability. Um, I don't even think that's a word. I'm making that up, I think, but let's just roll with it for right now. All right, so we're on Eagle Road now. So Eagle Road is one of the major commuter roads here in Boise. Um, it's around 55 miles an hour, and I feel like this is a good place to kind of talk about the power of the bike and kind of what you can expect. Idaho, man. <laughs> you know you're in Idaho when you have a dude hanging out of the back of a truck. So right now, fourth gear, hitting 56 miles an hour. It's a slight decline, 57, 58, 59. Let's see, 60. All right, so I'm pretty much pinned, a little less than pinned. I'm gonna see about 60 miles an hour today. So that's kind of the Grom in a nutshell. So I've seen 65, I've seen as low as 55 with this exhaust. Um, I kind of find that 60 is probably the good happy medium, 60, 61. So um, as far as power goes, does the bike have enough power to get you around town? Uh, yes. I, I wouldn't say the I wouldn't say the Grom has enough power to get you on the freeway or, or any major highway, um, but here around town, I think I mean I'm ripping, dude. 55, it's doing great. So I mean it's kind of what you have to expect from the Grom. Um, it's 125 cc's. It's got all of eight horsepower. Uh, I think to the wheel. I think um, with some mods you can do some like uh, you can do like an intake and you can do um, like I have an exhaust on here. I think with an intake and uh, things like that. I think you can see upwards of maybe 10 horsepower. Maybe maybe get into the double digits. Um, so it's not fast. Don't ever let it, uh, somebody tell you that the Grom is a fast bike. It's got enough power to get you around town, um, but I wouldn't take it on any major road trips or, or anything like that. We're going to be on any major freeways. Um, so that's kind of the power, or I guess the, the, the lack of power um, in that regard. I guess the biggest topic, the biggest thing that people ask, um, especially for the kids, um, does a Grom make a good first bike? Um, so there, there's so many ways to tackle this and I, I've, I've gotten asked this question a ton of times. I've seen other people ask moto vloggers uh, with Groms this question and, and it's really hard uh, to have an answer for, for everyone. Um, that's, that's something that's really hard. Um, what I will say though, let's start it off like this. The Grom is a great bike to learn how to ride a motorcycle on. Um, it really doesn't get any easier than this. I taught my girlfriend how to ride on this and she had never uh, driven anything stick shift or, or ridden a bike in her life and she learned it in about five minutes. Um, because it's so small, because it's so light, um, because it's just a four speed and because you're really not going to get any to any trouble as far as speed goes or, or looping it right off the bat. Um, a quick crash course and I think anybody can learn to ride this. I think I think a 10 year old can learn to ride this bike easily. So um, I think it makes a great bike to learn how to ride a motorcycle on. Now does it make a good first bike? Now this is where you have to kind of you have to weigh all your options and you kind of have to decide what you're looking for in a first bike because I know so many people that have gotten a Grom as a first bike and they got rid of it after a couple months because it wasn't fast enough to ride with the, the, the bigger bikes or the normal size bikes um, or it wasn't what they thought it was going to be um, or they're paying, like I said, $3,500 for a bike that still, honestly, will never be considered a real bike. And, and and I, and I hate to say that, but I don't get waved to on this bike. I mean, unless it's people in cars that think it's a cute bike, but I mean, other bikers don't really wave to me and it can't really do, um, you know, everything that a, like a 600 or a 1000 could do. It, it can't, I mean, to a certain degree. So um, as a first bike, you really have to know that you're not getting a lot of power and you're gonna be paying more than what you need to to do things that a bike with a higher CCs and, and, and a lower cost can do. So I think, with that said, I think that the Grom makes a great second bike. I think it makes an awesome and fun second bike and that's kind of why I got it. Um, I had my big boy bike and I had my power and I had my speed uh, for when I needed to do road trips or I needed to do some major commuting or riding up in the twisties. Um, what I didn't have was a bike that I could just just dick around on, man. A bike that I can have stupid fun on, not worry about getting 
tickets, I mean, necessarily. Um, not, not worry about things like that. I mean, when I jump on this bike, I feel uh, really safe from the law, I, I, I guess you could say. I feel like I'm not going to get pulled over, and if I did get pulled over for speeding or anything like that, I would just look at the cop and be like, 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 seriously, dude, like, look at it, like, like, look at this thing. Like, you're going to pull me over. So, do I think it makes a good first bike? Uh, I don't. I, I, I honestly, I honestly don't. Now, people are going to ask, well, what, what does make a great first bike? Um, honestly, man, I'm going to stand by my first bike, which is the, uh, the Suzuki SV650. Hands down, I think that is probably one of the best starters. And my GoPro died right as I was talking about bikes I would recommend as a starter bike. So, um, switching to the G7X for this. Um, so, starter bikes. I think the SV650, uh, the Suzuki SV650 is the best starter bike for the money. Um, you can get them as low as two grand. I think they have plenty of power um, as a starter bike if you're looking for something uh, that's cheaper. Um, you can still get loans for them. I think that those are awesome, awesome bikes, especially the older generations. Um, now, if you're looking for a newer bike and you're looking to spend a little bit more money as a starter bike, then I'd recommend something like the, the Yamaha um, FC7 or FC07, um, the FC6, the FC8, um, something along those lines. I think Yamaha has some good starting bikes. Um, but as far as the Grom goes, I think it makes a great second bike. I'll, I'll say that. Um, time and time again, I don't think it makes a good starter bike. Uh, I just, I just like I, I said, I hate seeing kids or younger people go and get loans for these things and lose a ton of money the second it leaves the showroom floor. Um, if you really, really want one and your heart's set on having a Grom and, and doing Grom things, then I would say, um, like I said, put a big down payment on it. Put at least a thousand bucks on down on one and, um, and finance the rest if you need to. Um, but yeah, guys, that's, that's going to be the review on the Grom one year of ownership. I think it's been a fun bike. I've done, um, a lot of cool things on it. I mean, I've mainly used it for commuting. Um, a Grom really is the most fun when you're riding with other Groms. That's something I did forget to mention. Um, it's a lot of fun when you're riding with other people by yourself. It can get a little, a little boring, um, at times, mainly for the fact that, I mean, when you're riding with other people, you're, you're kind of. I don't know, you're kind of like getting other people to do stupid shit with you, um, uh, I guess, I mean, in the long run. You're, you're kind of, you're amping up other people to, you know, jump off of curbs and do wheelies and, and kind of get in trouble. Whereas when you're by yourself, you're going to always feel like doing that. All right, anyways, guys, so I am going to end this vlog uh, review. So if you like this video, please hit that like button. Um, if you want to subscribe, please subscribe. Leave me a comment if you have any questions. Um, but as always, thanks for your support, and I will catch you guys in the next video. This is all to Anthony. Peace.